Hi, everybody. My name is Ida. So this is a class on Viking six-stranded braid. And this is a braid specifically that was found on an apron dress fragment. I owe the construction of this to a, um, a reenactor from Germany who has a blog post that uh, they translated into English and um, goes through the process of how they sort of tried to reconstruct and experiment um, based on the um, the find um, that was in a German book called uh, Die Textilfunde aus dem Hafen von Heidebu. Um That's the textile finds from the harbor of Hedby, um, and that's by Inga Hag. And I don't know whether that is in... Um, translated into English or not, that particular book. The original braid was done in red and yellow, I believe, and it was found sort of um, pinned down on top of a seam or a tuck or pinned sewn down. So that's where it was in the construction of that garment. So we're going to do this with two colors because it was originally done with two colors. I haven't tried to do this with more than two colors. Um, so we're going to have three lengths of each color. And I don't know how many of you are trying to follow along um, at home with this, but I'm just going to start by cutting three equal size lengths um, of each of my colors. And I'm using kind of a thick yarn for this because I thought it would be easier to see on camera. Um, I can also show you a braid that I've been working on that is a lot thinner that I've been doing with embroidery floss. Um, so while I'm doing this, uh, where's everybody from today? Is everybody, are most people from Aidenvelt or where's everybody hailing from? I am from the kingdom of Meridies, Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. I'm from Trimaris. I'm in New York. Are there any March of from the Outlands? Wow. Excellent. Kalantir. Popping in from Atlantia. Good. We've also got East Stardomesia, Drakenvold. Wow. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Um, this is really exciting to have you all with us. Just cutting my second color here now. Just sort of trying to get them all roughly the same length. Question. Yeah. Is there a length of... Uh, string you would not recommend using or a recommended length to you know, avoid tangles and issues and things so, like that? So yeah, so to deal with tangles, what we're going to be doing is um, if you're using longer pieces, get yourself some kind of bobbin or dowel or something that you can wrap them around. Um, mm -hmm. That's how I'm dealing with controlling longer pieces. If you're just doing it just to learn it and practice it and start to get the muscle memory going, you can have a short piece, um, you know, but if you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to actually try to make something out of this or apply this to something, then um, some, some sort of dowel or something will uh, help you out there. So these are just obviously, you know, these wooden um, like craft. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my six pieces and I'm just going to make a little knot in one end. So we've got our, our six roughly equal length pieces of yarn. We've got um, six dowels for them. This is how I have been doing it. I've been doing it by um, sort of taping the whole thing down onto a piece of cardboard or foam core board. Uh, there may be better ways to do this. There probably are. This is what I figured out that is more portable for me. So I can tape this down, um, especially if I have to set it down in between. Like if you've ever stopped braiding something in the middle, you know, and like what, what goes next? Um, one way to keep those strands in their right place is to tape them down onto a backing like this. So that's what I'm going to show you today. You could do this on a table if you have some other thing that you can attach them to. Um, if you want to try to do them in the air, like, you know, there, there's that sort of Viking braiding where it's hanging down from um, like a, a, a dowel or something. Um, if you can figure that out, 
great. That doesn't work for my brain. And the other part of that is that this is a flat braid. This isn't a round braid. And I think a flat braid tends to do better if it's done on like a flat surface of some sort. Um, but again, your mileage may vary. This is what works for me. Because we're taping things down, um, some tape, painter's tape or masking tape, something like that will do. I'm going to start by just taping my knot down onto my backing. And then at that point, I'm going to sort of wrap the, um, the long tails around the dowels. I've got that taped down just for demonstration. I think I'm going to cut these a little bit shorter. So you can start, you know, with any color and just wrap it around or make a little knot, whatever you need to do. And then once we're maybe at this length, this is where I would wrap a piece of tape around to secure it. So I um, had learned how to do this. Uh, we just got a new Baron and Baroness here in my barony, and I had been asked to do some finishing on uh, the Baroness's apron dress for um, their stepping up. And I thought, oh, okay, you know, I have some ideas, and then wouldn't it be cool to also have this braid and um, have that sewn down, you know, in their colors and sewn down onto all of the um, seams on her dress. So that was kind of how I got interested in this. Okay, so I've got my um, yarn and bobbins kind of taped up here. So um, the way we're gonna get this started is we're gonna have, um, you can have two of either, whichever of your colors you want, you want two of the same color and one of the other color on the left and you want two of the other color and one of the first color on the right. We are going to start on the right hand side and you're going to have your single color in between your two other main colors. And on the left hand side, again, your single color is going to be in between your two main colors. Okay. So that's how it's going to look. You'll take the top strand on your right side and bring it across and sort of down below um, the other three strands on your left side. And then this is where it gets a little bit complicated. You'll take your top strand on your left side and instead of bringing it over and across, you're going to bring it under the two that were with it on that original right side. So it's going to go under those two, it's going to go over that first one from the other side, and then it is going to become the bottom on your, um, on your left side or right side. And then you just sort of want to tension it out. And this is something where if you're holding it in your lap and the bobbins are hanging down over the side, they're automatically going to give you a nice tension for this. So again, we're just gonna you know, take the top one, it goes over, and then the top of your left side goes under and over. So what was the top? strand on your right side becomes the bottom strand on your left side. And what was the top strand on your left side becomes the bottom strand on your right side. So it was over those two, under those two, and over the bottom one. And that's it, over and over, forever and forever. Um, it does go pretty fast once you get it going and you start to get several inches done over the course of, you know, if you're sitting and watching TV or whatever you like to do when you're doing handwork, sitting at court. And you can kind of start to see the pattern as it's actually in the braid and it's going to be there's sort of a jagged red and then a jagged line of blue and then another jagged line of red. 
and that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to show you um, a smaller braid that I've been working on for a while. So this one is done. Ooh, I don't know if I can get it to show up very well. So here you can kind of start to see what that pattern is going to look like as you get going and as it gets finished. It's sort of a like a zigzag stripey pattern. And like I said before, it, it is a flat braid. So there is a skinny side and the flat side and the front and the back. It looks good. It looks like a braid. Excellent. It is a braid. <laughs> So it's a really, you know, if you are good at braiding, if you're good at kind of mindless, repetitive muscle memory tasks, it's a really easy thing to do. Um, and, and there's not a lot to it because it really is the same two steps over and over again. And is there any evidence of single colors or of more than two colors? That's a great question. I do not know of any. That doesn't mean that it wasn't a thing, just that um, we maybe haven't found any yet or maybe some haven't survived. Okay, cool. And like I said, you could try doing this with six colors. I don't know what that would look like. You could try it with three colors or four colors or whatever you want to do. Um, if you were going to try it with a single color, I'm not sure if there is an easier way to kind of get just a single color cord. So that's something to keep in mind too, is like what, you know, how, how worth it is it to go through these steps, um, unless you're going to have a multicolored braid, but that's up to you to decide. Is this the, the, the head of the example, is that the only example that we know of for this six strand braid? That's the only one that I know of. There may be other finds. Um, I, I do not know. Yeah, so if you're, you know, thinking like, oh, I, you, maybe you do, um, like Norwegian Viking, or maybe you do from a different area. Um, I don't know if it's gonna, you know, be totally, um, you know, fitting in with your persona. Uh, however, you can always, or at least I always think this is from a trading town, this is from a harbor, and it is possible that things could have traveled to um, other regions from where they were originally uh, used. But that could also be my cheater's way of explaining away my garb. So for those of us who just walked in, is it possible to go through the steps of this one more time? Sure, yeah. So um, basically what you want is to have six strands um, in two colors. You want them to be basically all the same length. Um, if you have long strands, you may want to use a bobbin or a clothespin or something to kind of um, corral that extra length and keep it from tangling. And then you can just make a, a simple knot at the top of those strands. I like to tape it down onto a piece of cardboard or something that is um, portable so I can carry it around. It's not taped down to my table and then I'm stuck to my table. Um, and you wanna start with uh, alternating colors, three on each side. So kind of like this. And the way, um, I learned from that blog post is to take the top strand on your right side, bring it over those two bottom strands on your right side and down here. And then you're gonna take your top strand on your left side. And this one is gonna go under the two bottom strands on the left side, but then over that one that was the top strand on the right side. And then you can just sort of tension them out. And it's those two things over and over again. So the top one goes over the two, 
top one goes under the two, but over that final one and again and again. So it's very um, quick to learn. It's mostly muscle memory at this point. And it's also very easy to, if you notice, like I think I, I think I made some mistake right back there. I could undo this very easily and go back and fix my mistake. This is fun. Thank you for teaching. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Ida.